These must be roast tinted glasses because today feels like vlog day 557. It's Wednesday and I'm a little bit at a loss this morning. I woke up and just kind of went through emails and caught up on comments and things like that from my phone. Had a hard time getting out of bed, which is normal. Read a chapter in, in my book, Morning Star, which is given to me by a patron. I've been thinking about this a lot lately and I think, I, I, don't, I don't know if I mentioned, I feel like I mentioned this somewhere. It's written down in my goals probably from like a year ago, but after living abroad for a while, after living on the ship, like I lost interest in so many things that I used to be interested in when I was younger, when, I, I mean, even 10 years ago, because I didn't have time for them or because they weren't available to me. There's a bunch of things that I still think are great and enjoyable. I just don't spend any time on. I feel like I've wiped, the, so much of the slate has been wiped clean. Like, I don't even know what I enjoy anymore. I don't even know what I like to do. I don't even know. I, there's so many things about myself. I don't know how to have fun is an accusation I've made against myself many times. Just trying to figure out and define myself and who I am and where I am. Not even really define yourself. I don't think you can define yourself. I think it's in defining yourself. It's not making a choice of who you're gonna be, but it's kind of just figuring out like, if you're this person, this marble statue, it's not a matter of going in and deciding what that statue is going to be. It's just a matter of removing all of the marble that's around it until it reveals the statue within. And granted, there's a level of decision-making in there and you probably over chisel a little bit and remove your nose but aside from that like just trying to figure out who I am it's a really weird existential thing that I've been thinking about lately because so many things that defined me when I was younger so many things that I would have said for the first 20 25 years of my life were defining characteristics of my identity are no longer even remotely I mean they determined a lot of who I am today but I've also just changed immensely and seen different things, learned things, seen the world in a different way. And that's what I woke up this morning thinking about, which might be a little bit too heavy for a Wednesday morning. But who am I now? And how do I decide that? How do I figure that out if it's even a decision I can make? And how do I move forward with that and learn to love this new version of myself and yeah, love the new me. Love the new me. But also, you just know who the new me is. Which means I guess we should probably talk some about the old me, which I'm not super comfortable in doing for a number of reasons, but I think we probably could get away with today. Ugh. I'm gonna talk about that some. <laughs> take advantage of my indecision this morning to get on top of some stuff around the house, clean, that sort of thing. I got a documentary for CNRS edited and uploaded, so that's good too. Some progress there on those voiceovers. Hopefully everything's good to go with that and I don't have to worry about it anymore, but we'll find out. The only thing I'm missing now is clean some cleaning supplies. I don't have any paper towels or anything left. And I think it's finally time to buy some tomatoes and stuff and make that pico that I've been talking about forever. So, pico, guac, and cleaning. Those are the things on the docket for the, for the moment. <laughs> It's for the brand Casino, and for those of you who are like, why are you going to a casino? It's simply a chain of grocery stores. Threw me off when I first found out about it too. Casino, and then uh, there's another one that used to throw me off all the time too, but Casino is definitely the big one. Like, I'm going to the casino, ain't gambling. Well, it depends. If you're buying avocados, you're always gambling. The main issue right now is dust in here. I've kind of neglected the room for a bit because I haven't spent a lot of time in here besides sleeping but I need to put some laundry away, dust things, clean things, you know, just wipe stuff down. I don't know, we'll get to that. But I feel like pico de gallo and guac should come first because I'm hungry and that sounds like way more fun. And, and then I'll, I'll need to clean up after myself when I make that too. So, you know, two birds, one stone, that kind of thing. Paper towels are kind of bouncy.
missing are some jalapenos, and this would be pretty much perfect. And salt, it needs a little bit more salt. Otherwise, really good. Thank you, Patrick and Eric, for the chips. Let's try the guac now. Also needs more salt, and also, oh, more onion, probably. Not too late now. I can probably put some from this. And one of the avocados wasn't fully ripe yet, either, which is unfortunate, but still tasty. Molto bene. <laughs> Felt like I gooed myself with some avocado or something there for a second. It's good. It took like an hour plus, maybe, not an hour and a half, but definitely well over an hour to do that, which is absurd, but it's what happens when you don't have a kitchen and you're running around in circles just trying to make stuff. That's why I don't cook very much because it's a giant pain in the butt to make anything, but hopefully totally worth it. I made a lot of both, so this should last me for at least, well, the guac will probably only last me two meals, but the pico should hopefully last me a number of snacks is the plan. <sighs> I'm so hungry, I'm ready to eat. After that, I'm gonna clean, go for a run. Cheryl's birthday party's tonight, which is what secret mission number two was yesterday, was her birthday present. I can say that now, because you won't see this before that. So I'll give that to her. Uh, it's a selection of ciders. She's a really big fan of ciders. So I tried to find, it's really hard to find cider here. I did the best I could. Hopefully, she, hopefully at least one of them is good. I don't know, I hope they're good. And one of them is really big. As far as talking through what we started the day talking about and thinking about, we'll get to it. Just let me eat first. <laughs> I think everything is clean, not, oh. And then I look over on top of my dresser and I didn't really organize anything over there, but it's just an organizational thing. Basically my two desks have paperwork on them that need to be like either filed or mailed or whatever. And outside of that, it should be done. I'm gonna go for a run. I also found out, uh, I also uh, apparently never RSVP'd for Cheryl's thing tonight, which I think I knew. I don't know if I knew that, I don't know. I might not be able to go. They might not have enough space for me at the reservation, which is fine. I just don't, you know, I'll have to give her her birthday present later. I told you there's a bunch of ciders. I have, I think two appies. That's a uh, rosé and an appy extra dry. This one is uh, a Val made in China, apparently. Really? Because it says it's made in France. This says it's made in France. This says it's made in China. That's confusing. Oh, another appy pear. Esprit from Italy. There you go, ciao Bella. And the creme de la creme, this giant bottle of Cidra with an S, which is an interesting spelling. Anyways, another dry cider, but a giant bottle. I'm not sure if she'll like any of these. I hope she likes at least one of them. I thought I'd buy her a sample pack because I know she likes cider. I also got this like super, like really nice grocery bag. It's like extra strong, a little bit insulated and has like this little pocket for, I don't know, maybe your uh, loyalty cards or something. I Cyril has little footies too, and I think you could hear them land there. I'm gonna go ahead, pack these into this again, obviously, and then I'm going to go for a run, and then we'll find out if I'm going to dinner or not. And that's basically all I got. That's my whole, that's, that's the whole shindig right now. I'm not sure about talking about, so the thing is, I'm struggling all day, because this is like this internal struggle. The transitioning into somebody that I want to be, like making goals, like this kind of stuff does tr take you in the direction of like being someone you want to be and doing things you want to do. But who I want to be, I don't know who I want to be I in so many ways. I do and I don't. I know who I used to want to be and I know who, sort of who I used to be, but I really think that I used to believe things about myself that weren't true. Like I used to think I was a different person than I really was. I think I projected who I wanted to be on who I was in a lot of ways, which is probably really normal. But the interesting thing about that is, is that it leaves you, once you realize that's not who you are, you you start to be like, or it's not who you were, you start to be like, well then who was I? And if I wasn't then, what am I now? I used to be much more strict, I used to be much more ruled by my fears. I'm still ruled by some fears, don't get me wrong, but like part of the reason I got fat and never lost weight like I'm doing now, so the weight loss journey video is one I need to make talking about how I got to where I am. But I gained a lot of weight because I just kind of believed I was the fat kid even though I wasn't fat and I don't know where that came from. And then I went to college, just let it go, stopped doing sports, just got big and it kind of ruined me. There are a lot of things like that where because of a wrong belief or because of a fear or because of some other limitation that was imposed on myself in a really unhealthy way, I ended up in a place I didn't really want to be. One of those fears, I was so scared of being rejected but also of just not knowing what I was doing. I didn't pursue film as actively as I should have. I went to film school in college, dropped out, and ended up being a, f a French major, which sounds fancy, but it's not the most useful degree in the world. Not that a film degree is much more useful, 
but at least it would have kept me on the track that I really wanted to be on at the time. And I can't take back all of the years that I've put in, all of the experiences that I've had, all the places I've gone, all of those things, and I wouldn't. I'm so grateful that I went through what I did, when I did, I'm so glad that I spent so much time in West and Central Africa, I'm so glad that I have lived here. I'm really glad that I suffered through a lot of things I suffered through because I really didn't have any other choice. And I fought against so many of those things thinking like, well, if only life had been more fair. Life isn't gonna be any more fair than it has been to you. And it's been super advantageous. Like I have so many advantages in my favor as it is. I really don't have a lot to complain about to begin with. And a lot of the things that I stumbled into, yes, I was dealt poor cards in certain arenas. Yes, I wish, in a lot of instances, I wish I would have been taught different things or raised to do different things or to believe different things or that I had been instructed to get through certain things, that I'd had mentors in particular arenas of my life that I didn't. Of course, there are gaping holes in a lot of areas. There are lots of things I wish I hadn't believed about myself or about the world around me. There are a lot of, a lot of things that I'm kind of thinking through right now and how it affects me and how it affects me moving forward. I think it's really, really important for me to get a handle on a lot of those things in order to properly move forward into who I want to really be. Like, who do I really want to be? And what does that look like? And what kind of decisions does that person make? And how does that person spend their time, spend their money, spend their energy? Where do they put themselves? I don't want to turn into some ridiculous workaholic who just, you know, breaks his back every day to create a video every day and to write books and to like pay the bills and all these things that I'm, I mean, like, I'm not, I don't have a problem with the way my life is right now. I mean, I'm gonna, you always have problems with the way your life is no matter what. But at the same time, I'm, yeah, I'm just thinking through and, and questioning a number of things. It's interesting that I've gotten to this place where like, there's been so much stress on my shoulders or running through my brain or whatever. Like it's been a survival year. I've had no, no time left after doing whatever I had to do to survive and making a video every day. I mean, I couldn't even write a, I couldn't even finish revising a book for an entire year. Now that I'm in a place where I can kind of get some of those things taken care of and I'm getting closer to where I want to be in a number of those arenas, like those base level of arenas, it's opening up like this whole existential can of worms where I'm like, oh man, here are things that I need to be thinking about, questions I need to be asking and places I need to be growing. How do I do this? So that's kind of what I woke up with this morning and that's that's where my headspace is today. And I've had a really hard time just even cleaning this. Like I've just been kind of standing in place every like five minutes, just being like, whoa. And it's not even, it's not even that I've got, like I've got this swirl of thoughts going on. It's just kind of like, just almost a brain dead, consciously brain dead and subconsciously active, I guess is a way of looking at it. So anyways, that's where I'm at. I know that was a little bit of a weird melancholy uh, turn of events for the day, but I'm, I'm thinking it through. We'll find out if we get to deliver all these bottles to Cheryl or not. I don't know if you, I don't think you can see the bottles. They're still here catching the light. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can deliver these to her today. If not, there's uh, another plan. It's actually, I think why, I think I was thinking that I was just going to the thing on Saturday and now I don't even know what's going on. So anyways, uh, I'm not very good at RSVPing apparently, but we're gonna get these to Cheryl one way or the other. Happy birthday, Cheryl. You know, a day late. Now that this is coming out the day after your birthday. And yeah, I'm gonna go for a run. I need to go for a run. It'll help clear the brain up a little bit more. <laughs> Fashion nine minute pace, not that fast. I don't know, just not in the runniest of moods. However, and a surprising turn of events, Moo, not even that surprising really. These guys are incredible. I don't know if you guys print, I'm gonna put like an affiliate link in the description because these guys, this wasn't even supposed to be delivered for another week. That's how fast they are. The postcards are here. So we have postcards now. Did I just rub that off my hand? Hope not. We have postcards. I believe there are 10 left up for grabs. Don't quote me on that, nine or 10, something like that. If you were thinking about getting yourself one of these, I'm gonna be sending them out to all $3 and up patrons over on Patreon, which will also be linked below. So if you wanna get one, let's open it. We can see what's inside, hold on. I wish I had a knife. Here, scissors will do the trick. Oh, that was way not accurate. Oh, okay, one of these packs, this pack is uh, for the $10 patrons because they wanted to get, they got specific items for the rest of you. You're randomly gonna receive whatever it is that you get. Uh, so, we have Bikes in Front of the Peloton, Sacre Coeur, the Eiffel Tower, of course, Victor Hugo, uh, the market over in Oberkampf, I think, Republique, the Golden Gate Bridge, just to keep things mixed up, the Cascade Mountains, snowy, the frozen tree in front of my parents' house, ah, 
the you decide coffee. If you were wondering whether or not I chose to show the heart or not, the answer is on the cup. The door is making creepy noises. Clark Dog, Sebastian's in this one. Bois Boulogne with some leaves left on the trees. And of course, Moulin Rouge. Now the Moulin Rouge one, this one is actually, I think this one's super cool because you can just make out the windmill up here. I think this one's really, really cool. There are only four of these. There are actually, there should be like eight of everything else. So you get an equal chance of getting anything but this. This is like the super rare one. So, because some people really don't like the dark ones. And it just worked out that that's the one that they chose to reduce the number on. So I was like, well, that's kind of perfect. Anyways, if you'd like to grab one of these, hop on over to Patreon. If you want to support me for $3 a month or more, that will get you one of these this time. And hopefully again in the not too distant future. It is getting pretty ridiculous. I'm gonna try and actually print off labels this time so I don't have to hand write all of them because this isn't even half of the number of postcards we're gonna to have to get through. Yikes. And of course, thank you to my patrons for making that possible. It's pretty crazy that we've more than doubled the number of people that are receiving postcards this time. We took the $1 level out just because of just sheer cost, and it's still more than double how many people got postcards last time, which is insanity. Anyways, I gotta shower and fix myself up. I'm going to be going to Cheryl's birthday pizza party, which is awesome, because guess who loves pizza? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and take care of that, and then we'll get going. <laughs> This looks legit. Wow, this looks really cool. Pizza time.